questions for coach? <laughs> Parkinson says he's run routes in games before he's practiced them. How is he able to do that given the timing and nuance and all this stuff that goes into it? Wait, what is, so what did he say? He's run? He's run routes in the games, he says, without practicing them because he came in the middle of the season. Is that not true? Um, I mean, I'm trying to think of what what routes he would he would be talking about. Maybe uh, it's individual plays. Maybe I portrayed that wrong. Yeah, but. I mean, those touchdowns that he caught were certainly repped, and uh, <laughs> you know, we're not going to call. There's a little nuance to some of those routes, but uh, you know, and I know he's run a bunch of flat routes and stick routes and throughout his career. Uh, there's probably not many routes he hasn't run before, but but generally we try to practice these things. Uh, you know, sometimes the volume, maybe you only get a, kind of a walkthrough rep at certain plays. So that could be something he's talking about. And and that's real across the league. And sometimes, uh, you know, there's, there's only so many live reps you can, full speed reps that you can get with these guys during a game week without, you know, wearing them down, wearing them out and them not being ready. And sometimes that rep really is uh, a jog through type rep where they've got to they've got to have it mentally more so, you know, to be able to, hey, we still expect you to execute this in full speed, you know, live looks. But uh, maybe that's what he's talking about. What was the thinking in that you went to Hawkinson so much against the Giants? I mean, it worked or because it worked early, you kept doing it? Or was that, I mean, the game plan from the get-go? Or what exactly? Yeah, I, I think we just try to set up plays and get guys in, in, in the right positions, uh, you know, where they can kind of play to their strengths a little bit. And then where the ball goes from there is dependent on coverage. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't set out and say, "Hey, we're really going to get TJ going this this week." Um, I think I think you've seen consistent production from him, and this one he happened to have a couple touchdowns and and uh, you know a bigger game than than he's had. But but uh, just kind of the way the the game flows, what what they present to you, uh, and try to give them some opportunities to put them in some spots that hey, if they do if they do do this, you know, uh, he is the type of guy who. You know, can go reach over someone's head and and, and make a great catch in the end zone. And, uh, he had a fantastic game. And when Herb Smith kind of gets up to full speed, just what do you envision that group looking like with him? I think I think Herb is just another piece that uh, that we can add. Uh, potentially, um, you can mix some of the. 11 personnels, he, he can be a guy that can come in. Uh, some of the 12 personnels, you can mix personnels and p perhaps do different things with uh, Johnny Munt and TJ, uh, TJ and Irv, uh, you know, um, and then and then potentially, you know, Johnny and Irv. You can just kind of mix and match. You have another guy uh, who can make plays. You have 13 personnel potentially becomes alive. You know, we've run some 22 stuff with, with CJ, uh, but 13 is, is a good personnel as well. You know, add another gap, and teams generally don't have a whole lot of inventory of defensive calls to 13. They're not spending a lot of time on those types of things, so sometimes you can get regulated front coverage, things that you know, uh, kind of know where they're going to align based on how you align. and and attack them that way, whether it's run game or pass game. So there's a lot of things you can do just just having another good player uh, coming into the mix. Wes, how do the Packers look uh, defensively now compared to that? Uh, I think they've they've changed a, a little bit. You know, they had a little stretch, I think, where before the bye where they, they'd had some yards put on them. But, uh, um, you know, Joe, Joe hasn't, you know, completely shifted the defense, but uh, – but they've uh, they've definitely they've definitely adjusted, you know, without without getting into detail, kind of how we see how we see how they've adjusted a little bit. But uh, but they, they've definitely tightened up. They've played better defense as of late, and, uh, and you know, Joe Joe's a really I know Joe Barry well. He's a really good coach and good coordinator. They're not gonna. They're not going to let problems kind of stick around. They're going to they're going to find solutions, and uh, they've always attacked the ball really well. Um, you know, we made we made some plays the first game, but it, it was it was up and down. Uh, it's a challenging front still, even without you know Rashawn Gary being out. Of course, Preston Smith and then Kenny Clark is is in my mind, you know, one of the the top top guys in the league uh, inside, and really Jerron Reed. 
uh, is a is a really really good player inside as well. So it's a tough front, but uh, you know we feel like we know this structure of defense, a similar similar structure, uh, similar structure of coverage at least, kind of starting from a shell and the things they can get to. So so uh, I, I know he'll have some wrinkles for us, but we feel good about it. You expect them to do something. Obviously, they have to do something different on Jeff, on Jefferson. Compared to week one, how do you just you kind of guess what they might do based on the film or just kind of go in with your attack? Well, there's only, there's only so many things you can do. And, and, and if you're pulling people away to put more attention on Justin, then other, other guys will have opportunities, whether that's early downs, if they're going to cloud him and put a safety over the top. You know, there's... Uh, you'd like to think uh, if there's two guys over there on one guy, then 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 you have some opportunities in the run game. You have some opportunities in those uh, kind of bigger zones for other guys in the pass game. Uh, and then and then just like we've seen all year, if they're going to double them on third down, then then other guys are going to have those opportunities. And I think that's you know some of these plays that uh, TJ's made in the last few weeks uh, on third down were were the result of. Guys doubling, doubling JJ, and then TJ having a one-on-one -on -one matchup that that you like. Yeah, have you guys seen just about everything against Justin this year? Uh, we've seen just about everything. Yeah, I, I, you know, when you move when you move them around, it does it does create. Uh, it's more difficult to if you motion him, if you have him in in the slot. He's the single. He's the number one out to a three three receiver side. He's the outermost. Uh, you know, th there's harder positions sometimes to, you know, it's easy to say, hey, just just double him, you know, if you're looking at it. But from a defensive coordinator standpoint, and making all the pieces fit, if it's if it's if you got Darrell Revis and you can just say, hey, we're just going to play our normal coverage, but you are man on this guy, then that's that's one thing. But I've only seen one guy who is really able to do that game in and game game out. Um, so. You know, it's 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 easier said than done to just always have two guys on him. But but the reality of of it is within your defensive scheme and and you want to put attention on guys. But there's other guys that can beat you, and there may be other players you have that uh, you're trying to protect at times as well. If you know, if you have a guy who's not a great cover guy, and hey, well, let's let's double him. But now. You know, KJ Osborne's running down the field, or Adam Thielen's running down the field on this, on this guy over here. So there's a lot of things that defensive coordinators have to kind of figure out when they're trying to come up with a plan. And and uh, much like Cooper Cup last year, uh, you know, everyone's going to kind of come up with their own their own little wrinkles and their own little plan. And hopefully, we can identify it early and and uh, figure out the answers. When you talk about the 22 and 13 personnel, when you arrived, did you guys see that sort of immediately as something that you wanted to utilize? Obviously, with the Rams using mostly 11, but the personnel was kind of different here. Yeah, it was different. We had a fullback. Uh, it's been a while, uh, really, since I've probably going back to Washington when we used a fullback a little bit, or when I was coaching tight ends in Washington. Sometimes we used the tight ends in that in that role, but. Uh, but we had a talented guy, so we, we kind of uh, figured that that would be a part a part of what we do, and and uh, uh, can be also good on short yardage and four minute type stuff where you know you've got more protected edges, those types of things. But we thought we would get into it. We just didn't know didn't know how much, and it's kind of evolved a little bit as to kind of some of the schemes that we've gotten to from those from those groups. But uh, you know, thirteen hasn't really shown up yet. Uh, some some of the things when you get into if you said all right we're, we we want to be in thirteen and we have a big thirteen plan if well if you only have three tight ends up in the game I mean some of those are who's active you got three tight ends up in the game if one guy gets dinged then that whole package that you worked on and you and you planned so that's I think that's why you don't necessarily see it as much in the teams that are running a lot of those types of uh, thirteen packages you know they generally have four at least four tight ends up. Uh, active. Do you think you would use CJ more this year, or is it about what you kind of anticipated, given it was a new environment and you were going to kind of play by ear a little bit? Yeah, I, I don't know that we were putting a, some kind of play count or or, or cap on on his on his reps. Um, we, we we've kind of 
each each game is a little bit different. They can uh, certain certain teams. You you kind of go into it and you say, hey, I feel like sometimes a lot of times it's the opposite of saying, hey, I feel like we can really uh, get some runs off against base and to throw it in the play pass game. Maybe it's more we like it more against their nickel stuff, their sub defense, uh, and sometimes it's the reverse. Um, and sometimes we've had some bigger 21 plans in, and, and a team does does something. Uh, they come out and they play kind of a 5-1 nickel, like we call penny, uh, against 21. And some of the things that you had set up for those types of looks, maybe you're not getting the matchups that you wanted. Maybe you want to get in 21 and empty them out. Well, now they're playing a nickel defense. And are you getting the same advantage that you would get if it was a backer walked out there? I mean, there's a lot of... There's a lot of things that kind of go into it, but we have, we've had 21 in uh, pretty consistently. It's just how much it gets activated, and and then if the game gets, the game gets tight at the end where you're having to throw the ball or you're, or it's out of hand a little bit, then uh, you're kind of out of the 21 stuff as well. So it just it just depends. We'd love to we'd love to pull away in one in one game uh, and uh, use CJ Moore. I can tell you that. Did you have a uh, favorite? Back when you were growing up, back in the day when they used to use, I mean, Sam Gash played for your dad. Uh, yeah, I loved Sam Gash. Um, uh, really, all, all of those, the fullbacks that I've been around, uh, Sam Gash, uh, God, uh, it's, I can't believe it's blanking on me, uh, LT's fullback, and, and Lorenzo Neal. Lorenzo Neal. Yeah. Apologies, Lorenzo. Um, <laughs> he was a great player. Um, you know those guys that have been around, and then CJ. The, uh, the interesting thing about those guys, uh, all those fullbacks. You know, you think they're big hammerheads, and they smash in. Uh, everyone that I've been around, that's a really good player. And then you even look to Uschek, who's got a. They're all really intelligent guys uh, that play that position. There's, there's a lot more to that position than just running straight and smashing in. There's a lot more agility involved. There's a lot more movement. There's a lot more, you know, sometimes they call those guys the erasers because it's just their job is to get that guy. But if anything else shows up, you know, they kind of clean up and erase any of the problems on their way to their assignment. So, uh, and CJ can certainly do that. And, and he's, he's a really intelligent guy. What was you were a part of Cooper Cup, what he did last year, and now what Jefferson's doing this year? I know you don't stay up thinking about this probably, but uh, can, a, can a receiver win MVP in the league? Uh, I doubt it. Um, you know, just just the way the way the league is, and and uh, you know how how much this game is dependent on on quarterback play to start. Uh, you know, whoever whoever's going to win MVP at the receiver position. Uh, you know, if it, if you set a record, something like that, an all-time record, maybe you have a chance. You know, do something someone someone hasn't done. But but there's there's always going to be that kind of top class of quarterbacks that are throwing for you know however many yards and however many touchdowns, 40, 50 touchdowns, and um, and and they're just so highlighted highlighted in this game, and and it is a. It is a difficult position to play well, and not many of them do it. And, and so to see someone playing like, you know, like the guys they're talking about for potential MVP candidates, Mahomes and those types of guys, like, um, you know, I think I think it'd be hard for 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 a receiver to ever to ever get it. Jefferson's going after Calvin Johnson's record this year. Coop, Cooper Cup did last year. What kind of talk was there last year when he was getting close to the record, and was there any? Uh, Added desire to try to get him it or anything like that, or yeah, I I don't I mean, would Justin like the right? I mean, you can ask him. My my guess is he'd say yeah, I want I want, I want it, um, but you can't you can't really go into it and and saying hey we're going to force this thing. Um, we, he's gotten to this point by us just. Uh, trying to you know work him into the offense and really when he's when he's had big games really aside from one uh, we've won all those all those games that he is involved because he's going to help us you know get in the end zone and, and and get down the field and get chunk plays but um, you know we just got to try to keep keep game planning and keep uh, 
keep trying to get good plays in there and, and the ball goes where it needs to go. I mean, that's, that's ultimately what we want. Uh, and, and if we have those opportunities to get it to him, we'll, we'll do that. But, you know, maybe if you told me, uh, hey, you guys are, you know, this many yards away, maybe we'll flip him a couple passes or something, you know, uh, and, and try to get that thing. But, uh, but ultimately, you can't, can't really think too much about that. You just got to play football and try to win the game. Has done anything different with Jair Alexander? I know week one there was a lot of discussion about them not having him shadow Justin. Have you seen them do anything different in that regard when they face receivers like Justin in terms of how they use Alexander? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it was Washington where he he moved a little bit, but for, for the mo for the most part, you know they they've kind of played sides, um, and I know they've had some. Some injuries as well, you know, so uh, some of that could be comfort level for other players and may not be any indication about Jair. I mean, he's playing really well. Um, so um, don't, don't really know what their conversations are, but, um, you know, he's a challenge. And then, and then Razul, Razul is, has been a really productive corner going back to last year when kind of maybe some people had kind of ridden him off and he has this great year. And uh, early in the year, uh, when they had Stokes, they, they were playing him some at nickel, and, and they'd kind of had some issues at nickel. And now him being back at corner, he's, he's a really instinctive guy. And, and you got to be careful with him because he can read routes. He can read the, read the cues drop when he's playing with vision. And, and he can jump some stuff. And he's got really good ball skills as well. So uh, you know, to, to move him around, I, I think he's playing pretty good football as well. How about uh, can you just assess Austin's play at center? You know the three games you started with Bradbury up. Yeah, if you asked Austin, he would he would tell you uh, there's a lot of stuff I can get better at, uh, uh, which is what you want. Uh, but but like I said, you know early on we have all the confidence in the world in, in Austin. We see him as a starting caliber player in this league and uh, uh, his communication has been really high level. There's obviously some technique things and some plays that, that, that we needed to clean up, but, uh, but we're really happy with where, where he's at and, and, and this is only going to help us uh, going forward just to have more depth and, and help him as a player as well. You know, he's also, he also plays guard as well. You know, you, you want those center guys that, to also have some guard flex and uh, just playing more football is ultimately going to help him and help our depth as we go forward.